Okay, in this section we're just going to finish up the rest of the facial bones that we haven't mentioned in the other lectures. And the first one we're going to look at here from the sheet is the nasal bone. You can see that the nasal bone is a paired bone. We've got two different bones joined together here. You can see this suture, and suture again is just the term for uh, joints between bones in the skull. Uh, suture here, so this represents, this is one nasal bone, and this is the other nasal bone, and they're joined together here in the middle. Now you can see most of the nose is gone here because most of your nose is made of what? Cartilage. Cartilage. If you can feel the end of your nose, you can feel that cartilage is really flexible, okay? Um, and it's just like the cartilage in your ears. Well, you have another type of cartilage if you're courageous enough to dig just a little bit in here. I won't judge you. Just past the inside of your nasal passage, you can push against this. It's a whole different type of cartilage, and it's a lot harder. It's like the stuff you'd find in your knees and whatnot. But that's what forms most of your nose. Uh, and But you can still break your nose, and when you break your nose, you're actually breaking the nasal bones that are up here. Now, on the bottom of your nasal passage right here, you'll see there is this bone that forms the bottom part of the septum. Now, the septum is what separates your right side of your nose from your left side. So, like, when you're, like, if you get a cold or something, sometimes you can breathe through one side pretty well, but you can't breathe through the other as well. That's because, you know, one of these is blocked off, but you still have, and they're separated completely in the middle by that, by these two bones here and the cartilage that connects in between them all the way to the end of your nose. This bone here that forms like the floor of your nasal passage and the bottom part of this separator here is called the vomer. This is the vomer. If you reach, like, touch underneath your nose right here, I think it's a pressure point too, push like right underneath here, you can feel the end of the vomer right there. Yeah, don't push too hard. Um, now this next one, okay, is called the lacrimal bone. And I don't remember exactly the Latin, but lacrima means tears. Uh, Mozart had a requiem called lacrimosa. You've probably heard it in like every, you know, epic movie of war, you know, sad stuff and so on and so forth. But lacrima means tears. And it's located right here, okay, past the nasal bone. This is the maxilla coming back a little bit further. You can see its borders. It goes in like this. It's in the inside of your eye socket. You know that little pink thing on the inside of your, in, in the medial part of your eye? The little pink ball looking thing? It's called the medial canthus of your eye. And it collects, it's got little tubes that collect tears. And see the tears drain down this hole called the nasolacrimal duct right here. They drain out of your nose. You ever notice that every time you cry your nose runs? That's because those tears are being collected here and drained directly out of your nose. So that's not snot coming out. It's not snot. That's a weird sentence. Those are tears that are running out of your nose, get collected here. They're normally collected here at a very low pace because your eye is constantly covered with tears, but it's, there's, there's not as many as when you cry. So when there's an overwhelming amount of it, it starts to run out of your nose. So that bone right here, you can see its borders, is called the lacrimal bone, again, because of tears. Now, that brings us to the palatin bone. Now, you think palatin, you probably think palate, and you'd be somewhat correct. Guess, feel the roof of your mouth with your tongue, okay? Most of that, gang, most of this here is actually your maxilla bone and not the palatin bone. Maxilla is where all your upper teeth are embedded. But look right back here. This little ridge here, this little border right back here, from here back, this is the palatin bone. Makes the very end of your hard palate. Now, if you touch the roof of your mouth with your tongue, you can feel this little ridge right here. And if you go past that, it's your soft palate, and that's just basically fleshy material and muscle. So feel back there with your tongue. Yep. Okay. So that's the palatin bone. The next thing is the mandible. Your mandible is just your jawbone. Okay. Your jawbone. You gotta appreciate. Somebody wired this back together with paper clips. Did a pretty good job. It's staying on there. You know. There's a 
overbite, there's an underbite, there's a megabyte. <laughs> All right, so moving on here, we've got the mandible. The part that comes up on the jawbone, this section right here, is known as the ramus. It's known as the ramus. You can see where this actually connects to the, uh, the temporal bone right in there. That's how your jaw actually fits into place. But the ramus is the part that comes up, and there's a ton of muscle on this. If you touch the sides of your, of your jawbone down here, not too hard, but clinch your jaw for a second. You'll feel these muscles swell up to the side as you do. You get a lot of muscles that attach to this all the way along to elevate the jaw uh, for chewing. There's one called the temporalis. There's another one called the buccinator. There's another one called the uh, masseter. Uh, there's a lot of muscles that attach here. Okay, so uh, ramus. And the other two things are mental. And I'm not 100% sure why mental has anything to do with the chin. Because, you know, think mentally, you think mind. But, you know, uh, mental protuberance is this bump right here. That's where the chin sticks out. It's the mental protuberance. Uh, some people genetically have an indention in this too. It's just, you know, just the way it is. Um, so that's the mental protuberance. Now, what do you think mental foramen are? What are foramen, folks? They indent on the side of your... They do indent, but they do a little more than that. A foramen is a hole. Yeah, so they are right next to that, right, right where you're pointing. And this right here, the mental foramen here. And I don't remember what goes through here, but the, the default answer that is pretty much always right is either blood vessels or nerves travel through these holes there. So, okay. So that's it for the remainder of the facial bones.